chest and refresh the page. Refresh the page. Yes, sir. And you should be able to find my name somewhere around there. One and only. <laughs> the one and Vlad. only. Yes, there's there are too many Vlads here. Too many Vlads, oh. What's the name of the game? Uh, puzzles and? Pa mm, puzzles and uh, games with special guests. Help me. Okay, just just give it a second. Leeches takes a bit of time to refresh the streamer's page. We are not in a hurry. Hey, Slippery Report is our friend, our other friend named named Vlad that we talked about earlier in the chat. And we have our mod here tonight, Alemando as well. What's up guys? Welcome. So is Leeches still not updating the streamer's database? I tried to look at... We're not, so in, we're not in a if hurry. I, if I type Vlad here... If you type in my name, my actual username, you should be able to reach my page and click on the streamer icon. Yes, but... I type it and then I should click enter and it does nothing. Oh, really? Hmm. Technical problems, guys. We apologize. First time doing a joint stream here. By the way, people in the chat, can you hear both of us? Can you see both of us? Okay, I am live now. So if you go back to the streamers, streamer chess, tab, chess I, yeah, yes, I should press be. Space or click. Uh, what? I mean, just go back to the watch and streamers page. I'm in the list now, and it says live. And you'll you'll be directed to the Twitch embed version, to the embedded version of the stream. Mm. Yeah, only the last one, which is live, is KGWM. Yeah, let, let me just, just, give, just give me a second. Apparently, I have two bots conflicting in the chat, both of them trying to interact. I need to disable. Oh, I found them. you. I found you. Okay, so now Ready you can click. 32. Yeah, you can click on my on that stream, and you should be able to see the entire screen. Yes. Yeah. People are just. <laughs> People are just slowly flowing into the stream, I guess. So let me disable my second bot. I have two bots organizing the chat. <laughs> so I'm gonna disable. I'm gonna disable one of them, and the night bot is going to reign supreme. Night bot is our friend. Okay. So can you see everything now? Yes. Thank okay. you. You can also see yourself, so it's like an inception moment, right? <laughs> you can see yourself, you can see me, and you can see the board. So, let's get to work. Let's see. So, Black I'm to me. It was uh, Steinitz Rui Lopez. Yeah, I think this was uh, yeah. Yeah, some, some strange line from a game played on the site between two players, 1900 and 2100, so... And Black is entangled uh, very well. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, uh, it's Black's turn, no? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, Black black to move. I see one target on B5 and the King on E1. So normal and move like... C3, like... Only Knight C3, but then Bishop B4 and Rook C8, no? Uh, but I think if Queen A5, Knight C3, and Bishop B4, they have time to take with the check on D7. Check, Knight takes D7. Oh, and you're saying, oh, and there's no way to actually defend that even further. I see, I see your point. So let me let me draw some arrows to actually show what people are, well, what we are visualizing and what people should be visualizing as well. So Queen A5 check, Knight to C3 blocking, and now Bishop to B4, adding an extra attacker. So if they take on d7, we have to recapture. And now there's actually no way to to defend the knight even further because of moves like queen d2, queen d2, but rook c8. Rook c8, rook c8. Yeah. So I think this this looks pretty clear to me. So let's go for this. What if they have? Okay, bishop c3. We just take with the queen on b5. Okay. 
So Queen F Knight, they responded with Knight C3. Let's go Bishop B4. Oh, so they just castled. They actually just castled Queen side here. Um, I guess we should take on C3 and not on B5. Of course. Of course. Okay, and that's the problem. That's it. So this was not very high rated. We got seven points. So you can see at, at the top of the screen, uh, it actually says our our actual rating. So now it's twenty three ten. So that's our puzzle rating. So let's move on. Very nice. So, I, find, I find this idea very interesting to to extract puzzles from from people's games and and. Uh, as today, uh, they are played uh, millions of games online, and, and new new patterns emerge. Absolutely, I agree. I think pulling in tactical puzzles from real games is very instructive. So, in this problem here, last move was Rook from C1 captures a pawn on C3. So let's see what. Uh, apparently, apparently, uh, Black had something in mind when he freed uh, the C4 square. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he did sacrifice that, that pawn on the C-file. Just to open up some, some diagonals. Yeah. So, and the bishop from G2 is completely out of play, which means that, that we should use the, the light squares bishop from A6. And by the way, people who are just tuning in, welcome! I'm having a special guest tonight. You can, you can learn more about him by typing the special command guest in the chat. Let me do it for you. So I have a short introduction here about my special guest tonight. He's one of the best Romanian coaches, has had a lot of success at previous European and national championships with his students. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a patser. I'm a patser compared to my main guest tonight. Okay, let's go back to the problem and see what's happening here. So I have a question for you because you are a title player and you have this international master title. In a tactical puzzle, do you always evaluate checks first, captures, and then threats? Is this your method of thinking? Uh, yes and no. It depends if another feature uh, goes first, like like uh, like hanging pieces or, or exposed king. But anyway, forcing moves, uh, you should start with uh, threatening late first. Yeah, so. First of all, we should uh, see if there's a mate threat, then a check, then a capture, and then um, a good attack on a high value piece. I understand. Okay, yeah, that's actually very instructive for, for me as well to, to learn about that, because I don't usually go for for the mate threat per se. Usually I go for the checks, then I look for the highest value capture, and then I look at threats. But of course your point stands, it's better to threaten checkmate than to win the queen. For example. And at the same time, you should uh, always find the most forcing move, which which restricts uh, the opponent's replies. So if you have a move which which gives him only one one reply, you should go for that first. That makes your job easier when you calculate as well, if you can force his res response absolutely. So now we have uh, uh, some geometrical motifs here. There are three three pieces aligned on the big dark squares diagonal the rook from c3 is, is uh, exposed king is exposed and another important point is when we see such a, an exposed king we have to immediately discover um, the lines which which are leading to the king so it's not enough to to say that king a2 is exposed we have to see that that uh, actually He's exposed along the A file, and he's exposed on G8 A, A2 diagonal. Okay, so a move that I'm calculating here is Bishop, bishop C4 check. This is the first move I'm looking at. Yes, but but this smells like like uh, the main idea. It's not like a preparatory move. Yes, the problem with, with Bishop C4 is that he takes on C4 with the rook, and. Um, but then, but then you take you take the queen. Okay, so let's see. Bishop. You take the queen. B takes a five. And now you take with the knight on c four, and you're actually threatening to play rook to b two check and win the bishop on. Yes, bishop. Uh, 
bishop c1, let's say. Uh huh. So bishop. Okay. So so let's do this again. So bishop c4 check. Rook takes. Queen takes a5. B takes a5. And now we take with the knight on c4, and they play bishop to c1. You said right. Exactly. So okay. so I return to my main point. Okay. If if we, we we feel that that the bishop from g2 is completely out of play, and the bishop on a6 is a uh, our uh, main trump in the position, we we uh, should uh, reverse the move order and try to remain at the end of the line with the bishop on c4 as the main idea. Excellent. So I, I really I find that very instructive, and I agree with you. The bishop is such a strong piece. Now that white pushed a3 and b4, the the light squares are very weak around the king. So exactly. Like that. Um, so that's so another move we're considering. Knight. Let's knight. see if knight c4 in the, in, in the beginning works. Okay, let's analyze knight to c4. So what is he going to do here? His rook is under attack by the bishop on g7, and yes. we're also directly attacking the queen as well. So. Yes, I see this this uh, tactical feature of simultaneous attack. Uh, not enough covered in in, in tactic uh, puzzles or, or books. Yes, because. In fact, is it is a mix between between discovered attack and the double attack, this simultaneous attack. Yeah, and look at this. I find it very interesting. Knight c4. If he cannot capture, if he captures with the rook, we take back with the bishop, and I believe he needs to step onto the b file. So then we can take the queen for free. Exactly. So and the only move uh, uh, looks like uh, queen a4. Okay, so we're calculating knight to c4 and queen a4, okay. So can we just take the... We can just take the rook on c3 and then take the bishop on e3. We're winning a full rook. Yes, but we should see if uh, vice versa doesn't work. Like knight e3 first and then bishop c4. Knight e3, rook takes e3, bishop c4. Okay. Looks equally good. Oh, that looks even more crushing, yeah. I don't know what, what's the difference. The difference is that you're also threat. If you take on e3 first, you're also threatening bishop c4 right away, winning the queen on a4. Yes, and the, and the rook on d1. Yeah, there's so many things hanging in this problem. Honestly, I don't see. I don't see how white is going to respond. It, it, it's typical for for King's Indian or Benoni type of structures when when white castle long. Yeah, I mean, this this looks really... Let's see the opening. So the opening was actually a Pierce defense. But it was a Pierce with an early f3, bishop e3, queen d2, and castle's queen side. So pretty much white was going for the caveman attack, so to speak. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think, honestly, does white have anything better? So after knight c4, does he have any checks or any way to attack our queen? Mm -hmm. This is something I'm always considering. He has, he has 90, 97. 97 has and then... This makes an important point. If the rook would be on f8, then... Then 97 will... will uh... That would actually be almost close to checkmate, huh? We have to start exactly. on... Wow. But also after knight c4, is there knight to b6? Is that a counter-attacking move? Knight to b6? Attacking our queen? No, because rook takes b6 and, and we simply... Aha, uh -huh, because of rook takes b6 and he's not in time to recapture with the bishop because he loses the queen, right? Okay. Exactly. So I think we should just go for knight c4 at this point and see how white is going to react. Feeling pretty confident. Okay, so he does go for this knight to e7 move. And of course, let's not step onto the h file and give him any counterplay with rook h1. Let's just play king to f8. Exactly. And now he plays queen to d5. Interesting. Okay. So now we have to stop and evaluate for a bit. But it looks like the rook on c3 is for free. Yes, but let's see if he has something with knight g6 or no. No, I, I don't think he has enough pieces in the attack. He only has the queen and the knight. Very strong combination usually, but everything is protected around our king. Yes, and, and bishop c3 is uh, compulsory in order to avoid rook takes c4. 
Yes. If, if we take the knight, then rook takes e4, and maybe he has some counterplay. Right. So yeah, so let, I think that rook is entirely for free, so let's just take it. And if he takes our queen, we, we of course just capture back to the rook, and we should be safe. Uh, let's calculate knight g6, though. He so bishop takes three. Knight yeah, he G6. just he just took the queen on a8 now, so we just yes. we just recapture. He gave up, <laughs> in fact. Yeah, he ga he gave up, <laughs> basically. Yes. So it's funny because let me tell you something about the puzzles. The puzzles on Liches don't follow the the actual game, right? These are just the sub variations, the sidelines of the game. So usually what they do is they pull a position from one of the games and they say, oh, because of the computer there's a tactic here and let's just have you find the best move. You're actually playing against Stockfish. So Stockfish is actually making the best moves in, this, in the position. So that's pretty that's pretty interesting here. Let's move on let's move on to the next. next Very round. nice. Very nice one. A local superiority and um, Black was just in time to exploit the lack of harmony in in, in what camp. Okay, so the next puzzle is from some type of Queen's Gambit declined, it looks like, where White's queen side just miraculously disappeared somehow. Let's, let's, let's pass quickly. So it was a Tartakovo defense. Yeah, this was. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this was, but. I, I always enjoy to, to look at the last move uh, when, when I solve puzzle, at least, yeah, uh, so on the, other sides. The last because move it, was Rook Kid. It gives you a feeling about where the game was and where where the game is going. I agree. I also find it instructive to look at the openings. Because in some openings, like the Nightdorf, you have all these thematic sacrifices, right? You have the rook sa the exchange sacrifice on c3. Uh, you have some other ideas like knight takes e4 in some positions. And these are all typical for that opening. And when you increase the number of, of patterns or, uh, or typical plans in a position, then, then you will be able during the games to, to mix them in, in various forms. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing some moves in this position here. And the first move that comes to mind is a queen check. Either queen to d8 or queen to e8. We just have to figure out if either of and those is another check good. and another check bishop takes f7 oh, yeah bishop bishop f7 is also another check you're correct so let's see how how to start so i'm looking at queen to e8 check first this is the move that i'm considering first but it doesn't appear king to lead seven. anywhere king h7 yeah just king h7 and if yeah. bishop if bishop takes f7 he has queen f8 so let's show let's show the viewers. Uh, but uh, uh, this is a, a transposition, no? If if we play first bishop f7, uh, king h7, uh, queen e8, king uh, queen f8 is the same position. I see. Okay. So so it should be a difference. It should be a difference between these lines. I think I think there's a difference for sure, but we just have to figure it out. So what if what if bishop to f7? The difference, the difference is that in in your line with queen e8, he doesn't have the reply uh, king h8. While while in the line with bishop takes f7, he has uh, uh, king h8. That is true. That is very true. Oh, it's the same in fact because uh, queen e8. Uh, Queen f8, bishop takes f7, king h8 is the same. But I think I see the actual line now. Oh, actually, maybe, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just talking some nonsense. But I wanted to play. I wanted to play queen to d d8 first in order for us to attack the rook on c7 as well. But the consequence of playing queen to d8 is that we cannot take on f7 with the bishop afterwards. So exactly. So reverse the move order. Keep the idea with queen g8 in mind, and uh, uh, the queen on c5 will will be overloaded. Okay. 
Black won't be able to, to play Queen F8 anymore after Queen D8 because the rook from C7 will be hanging. So you want you're still you're considering Bishop takes F7 first still? Yes, with the idea if no matter where uh, King H8 or King H7, Queen D8. Okay. So what if what if Bishop F7, Bishop F7, King H7, Queen to D8 allows him to capture a bishop with a rook, right? Ah, that's the problem. So that's that's I was so saying earlier. I I think the consequence of playing to d8 is that we actually lose control over the f7 square. So that's not ideal. So what about this? What about bishop f7, king h7, and now queen to f5? Is that an idea? Of course, queen to f5, king h8, king h8, and now it's a dead road. How about bishop takes d5? At the end of that line, so let's say uh, king to h8. We are two pawns down. We are two pawns down, and doesn't look. Yeah, it doesn't look. It looks like that knight is going to be able be able to come back into the defense. Hmm. Yeah, knight f6, and then we we are playing with with two pieces completely out of play. Knight e2 and rook e1. Rook c1 would be nice at some point. Yeah, but sadly we don't have control over c1, and we can't can't play this right away. Or actually, can we? <laughs> can we play rook c1? <laughs> Look at this. So if we play rook c1, they have to take the... But actually, not right away. We can't play right away because they just take our queen. Right? Or they can just... If we play rook c1 right away, they just take... They, they just take. Oh, this is pretty funny. Rook c1, bishop takes... I was thinking, but if rook c1, he can just take with the queen. If, if rook c1, then just queen takes, and then they take the queen on d7 for free. Yes. So I think that's very simple for black. So I don't think rook c1 works, sadly. Yes. But let's go back, let's go back to this bishop. This bishop f7 looks promising, I think. Bishop f7. Oh, in the, in the chat, we are being told that Leon and Leonia are going to join the show too. So I'm imagining this is going to be a special special guest in the chat, not on the stream. Whoever that may be. Um, okay, so I think this bishop f7 looks like it could lead to somewhere good, but... Yes, sometimes you have to trust your intuition and to rely on, on, uh, on logic and, and to throw another, another piece in, in the battle, yes? Yeah, like I, I want, I think the key to this puzzle is somehow activating the knight from e2 eventually. That would be nice. Yes, with well, knight f4, knight g6. But yeah. on the other hand, on the other hand, um, queen e8 allows allows direct defense with queen f8. You you don't want uh, to help black. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think I don't think the queen check. I don't think the queen check is good because exactly what you're saying. If queen to e8, then he just brings this guy into the defense. So that's not good. Well, start with bishop f7, and, and then as the, the game progresses, you, you will see new possibilities. I agree. Let's start with bishop f7, see how black reacts, and take it from there. Okay, so that was actually the correct move, and he moved to h7. Hmm. So now, we said earlier... We uh, we reverse the move order and we start with bishop g6, a move which was invisible earlier, somehow. Wait, bishop yes? g bishop g6 here? Yeah, just just an idea to, to bring the knight in, in in the battle as as we. Oh, that's amazing! Are you looking at bishop g6, knight uh, king takes and then knight f4? Activating that piece. King H7. Wow. Back. It, it doesn't make sense it to doesn't, go. It doesn't look like we have enough pieces though to checkmate him in that line. Hmm. Why don't we, if we start with Queen F5, King H8 and then Knight F4. Oh, I so, like this. I like that. Yes, yes. That's very good. Just to, uh, to overwhelm him. I love this one. I love... So Queen F5 with the idea that he cannot play 
g6 because we're just gonna checkmate him in two moves. So he has to go, he's forced to go to h8, and now we bring our last minor piece into the attack with knight f4, intending to jump all the way to g6, and that's actually a mate threat, very nice. Everybody joins the party. Everybody's joining the party, in the chat as well, good evening everyone, welcome. We are featuring international master Nod here tonight. Uh, you can use the special command guest to learn more about him. And we're having fun with puzzles. After that, we're going to analyze a couple of Grandmaster games. And we're going to finish it up with some hand and brain against you, the viewers. So that should be very fun at the end of the stream. Okay, so I like... Let's go back to the puzzle. Uh, as my guest here was saying, Queen f5 looks like a very strong move. Forcing him to go to h8 with the king. And now knight f4. Yeah, let's just do this. This looks crushing. I don't see a defense. Okay. So queen f5, king h8 on the board. Because the trap is simply a smoother mate with knight g6, knight f8, and queen h7 in the end. Yeah, I mean, so after knight f4, he has to play the, the g pawn somewhere, right? Like, how is he going to defend? g5. Th then we have queen e5. And queen e5, king h7, um, bishop g6, or... Honestly... It just looks like there should not be any way for, for him to escape. So let's just trust our instinct and play knight f4 here. And yes. I think he's gonna sacrifice. Honestly, I think he's going to sacrifice the exchange on f7 after that. Like, yeah, but the problems remain. Remain the same. Yeah, the problem remains the same. Okay. But well, we have to keep in mind that f8 is under strong control by black, so we are not actually threatening to put a piece on f8 yet. Okay, let's go for this. Let's go for this knight to f4. Yeah, so he just sacrifices the rook, and of course we're going to take it. I mean, there's there's nothing better, right? Yeah, there's nothing better. Knight to g6 allows him to actually come to to g8. So let's just. It's take a very interesting point. Uh, uh, Why you just? Um stressed that uh, in, in such positions black black has to, to change the character of the position he has to change uh, to to give up uh, the exchange in order to to uh, find some some counterplay otherwise he, he will be that lost and then in, in such desperate positions you you need to be creative and and to create an imbalance somehow yeah, I, I think I think that's very good. Like saying saying that for the for the viewers who are more like casual players and not necessarily tournament players, maybe this helps them understand chess a bit deeper on a deeper level. Most of our viewers here are actually active on Lee Chess. Like they all have accounts. Some of them play quite a lot of bullets. Some of them play quite a bit of blitz. And some of them are just very casual, uh, who don't actually play over the board's chess. <laughs> Feel the Thunder is saying, don't forget about us when you start getting approached by IMs. Well, <laughs> that's funny. I don't, I don't plan on streaming with more than just one IM for the time being. You are the... Uh, Nad is gonna be the only guest for the time being, unless you guys start volunteering as tributes. So, this puzzle was very interesting, I really enjoyed it, and my instinct was right, right? I said the knight has to come into the game for some final threats, and it was true. Because uh, um, a very important uh, idea is, is that we need to create uh, a two versus non PC superiority, or three versus one, because we, we need two pieces in order to deliver mate. And in our case, we, we've been attacking with queen and bishop, he was defending with the rook, and we just need another piece in order to join the attack, and now we have other, our uh, two attackers, and, and the king is stranded in the corner, knight e6 is threatened, knight h5, so many possibilities, while, while the bishop from, from a3 cannot cover the light squares. Yeah, I think, I think here, of course, actually in the final position, if we were given another move, let's say that black cannot move and it's white's turn to move, what is our actual threat? Is it knight to g6 or knight to e6? Or even rook d1. Even rook d1 just to bring 
the rope. Oh yeah, that just looks that just looks crushing. Although we have to be careful. Um, Rook the D1 allows Queen to C2 maybe. But no, that's not really that's not really a threat. I think you can just take and then safely. Uh, it's actually a bit it's actually a bit scary. I don't know. We we can take Queen takes D5, open up the file, and then. Yes, yeah, so I just activated. You know this stockfish on leeches has this special function. You can activate the analysis and you can also click on the target button, which shows you the threat. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. I was just checking that. And apparently the threat is Rook D1, as you said. So let's move. I suggest moving on to the next problem. This was very instructive. And we have actually 9 to 10 people in the chat, so that's very nice. Getting double digit viewers is quite good because we are competing against stronger streamers, I guess, on Twitch, you could say. So, in this puzzle here, the last move was king from d2 to d3, so what, it looks like it, it looks which like was the best ring. Which, which was the opening? Okay, the, okay, let's show. So the opening was a Slav defense with an early bishop f5. Uh, so, kind of... Um liberated bishop defense yeah yeah the the so-called liberated bishop exactly like the london system uh, with black in the slot yes with the reverse of color and, and white tried a, a catalan setup and then chased the bishop which allowed uh, black some counterplay on the h file and then he remained with the king in the center for uh, let's, let's actually let's go let's go through the game very fast to show what actually happened. So they so White played very principally here. He actually principled. He played uh, Knight H4, chopped the Bishop on G6. But, but, but kind of early, he he could have waited with with that chop on G6. Yeah, it, it looks like he got stuck. He actually did not get stuck in the center. Wow, very strange. He actually castled, lost a piece somehow for free on E2. And Maybe then... he, he hoped to trap the queen or something? Yeah. Okay. Oh. This is... Some, some kind of blunderfest. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is a big blunderfest here. Or maybe... <laughs> Whoa. This is very... This is he very... He felt lucky. Unusual. Yeah, this, it, felt, it felt like black was up in this game, but now suddenly lost control for a bit. Okay. So, here, of course, we are down in exchange. And our queen is under attack, so we have to take immediate measures in order to win this game. Yes, but uh, what I see, if we suspend our queen uh, with the sky hook, and uh, he takes our knight, then then queen f5 mating patterns. Ah, <laughs> very nice. So, so are you are you saying queen f1 is the first move here? Yes, uh, the idea is that, that somehow you, you should find stable pieces and, and when one piece is, is stable in itself and, and uh, it's defended by tactical means, it's always uh, good to see such Very things. important point you're bringing. So this is, I think this is important for the viewers to understand. If we move queen to f1, it appears that white can just take the knight on e4 for free. It looks like we're just blundering. But what you said is you said it's defended by tactical means. And that just means that he cannot take because we give checkmate on f5. And all, exactly. the, exi all the exit squares or the flight all the flight squares for the king are taken away by the queen. And this is very important because it looks like our knight is not very stable on e4. But we can make it stable by threatening this idea. Yes, and at the same time we we are creating a pin and if we are allowed a second move, then, then Rook D8 is also interesting, uh, threatening Knight C5. Ooh, and lovely, uh, lovely and move. And White is unable to coordinate his forces. I like that. So, can oh. we... So, I was thinking about this. Isn't our threat, like after Queen F1, if you're given two moves here, I think I would play queen f1 and then queen to f5. Or knight f2. Knight f2, king d2, queen d1, and the rook is hanging. The rook from yeah, the that, that, that works as well. So, 
Let's ask another question. Is there anything better than just playing queen to f1 here? Uh, I don't think so because our queen is our queen is hanging. We have to realize. The options are, are reduced. Only queen f3 and queen f1 and, and queen h3 maybe, but it, it looks at the, at the rim. Yeah, I don't or know. Or queen h1. Queen h1. Queen h1, but then we don't have this f. We don't have access to the f5 square, so that looks a bit strange. Yes, and then knight f2 is no longer a threat. So yeah, uh, this is very, a very important point. When when you try to uh, to find more than two or three candidate moves, you have to group them to chunk them together, and from the similar move to to choose the best one, and then throw the other. Uh, candidate moves away. Yeah, so, so if they are, have uh, some similarity, some, some similar points, then choose the best one and compare it to completely other ideas. I agree, and by the way, we have a couple of new viewers, so welcome guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to the stream. We are joined streaming tonight, me and International Master Nod here. Um, I think we are having a nice collaboration so far, it looks like uh, we can see similar moves together and understand the nature of the positions. So hopefully our viewers find the puzzles instructive as well. I, I always rely on that and, and uh, tell my students to, to start with a particular case and then to find some, some uh, original ideas and then to, to be able to generalize that, that kind of knowledge they, they extract from, from one example or... Yeah, so I think in this puzzle here, like it doesn't make any sense to place the queen on, on h1. So I think f3 or f1 has to be the correct idea. Yeah. And yeah. one useful idea for me is when I play chess, I try to maximize the mobility of my pieces, which means how many squares I can have access to. So yes, in, in fact, uh, in fact, computers uh, does the same. Exactly, yes. computers and their algorithm, the they always rate, they always rank the ability of a piece to move to as many squares as possible. So let's I play like a computer. Let's play Queen F1 here. Yes, if if we want to bake up our our instincts with calculation, we need to calculate rook B1. Uh, rook b1, yeah, rook b1 yes. has to be... Rook b1 is, is principal because it, it uh, cuts uh, knight f2 idea, it covers uh, d1. So rook b1, how about just queen How about just queen f5 setting up some discoveries? King c4. King to c4, okay. But then we have queen... Then King d back and knight c5. Yeah, I think I think we have in that line. So after king to c4, I think we just have queen to d5 check. King to d5. If if uh, uh, king d3 back, then knight c5. And if uh, what about king to b4? King to b4, and then we have to find something there. A5 makes sense. A5, nice move. A5. King a3, I suppose, and and the king escapes. Yeah, the king actually escapes in that line. Okay. Escapes. And, and returning to our previous example, we need to, to use the rook from f8 somehow. Oh, I, I agree. Use... I think the rook from f8 is a dormant piece so, at the moment. So it's after, after, sleeping. after rook b1, after rook b1, knight takes c5 immediately. What about this? Okay, so I have a question for you. What about starting this with knight to c5? Is that something you would ever consider? I'm, I'm just throwing out ideas. I'm not saying it's a good move. But I'm just yes. asking, would you ever calculate something like this? Yes, because because king is always a poor defender. So any, any check will... Um, will, uh, will deflect the king. Yes. So knight c5, let's see. Important, knight. he doesn't actually he doesn't have to take, right? He's not forced to take. On c5. I mean he I mean it looks like that's the best move taking, but he's not necessarily forced because our queen is also under attack. Yes, but uh, on the other hand if king d2 then simply if king to d2, then probably we just take the rook with the check, 
and then take the queen, but that looks equal. For some reason, it lo doesn't look like we have enough pawns. Uh, it, it looks worse for black. It actually looks it's... actually looks worse for black. I agree. It doesn't look In like that game, our king is is completely out of play. Yeah. So knight c5 doesn't appear to lead. Yes, but on the other line, if we start queen f1, rook b1, then a knight takes c5. Uh -huh. The point being that in oh, that line... I like that, I like that. That's the nice. queen is no longer hanging in that line. I like this. So, in, so starting with queen to f1, then if rook to b1, this time knight to c5, and now our rook is going to become very active on the d file. Yes. And there's and no... If, so e2, the e2 rook is going to fall next and he's going to get checkmated in the middle of the board sooner or later. Yes. Oh, I love this idea. So I think we should go for this queen f1 move first. And see how white responds. What do you say? The thunder is asking in the chat if rook b1 knight f2 is working, uh, but, is, but is that working? king d2. Yeah, I think just, I think just king, to, king to d2. So you're able to watch the chat as well, great. Yeah, I was gonna ask about yeah. that. You can see the chat on the left-hand side of your screen probably, right? Exactly. Okay, good, great. Yeah, let's go, for, let's go for this queen to f1, see how white responds. Oh, and we failed, wow, that's... We don't have c5 directly. Yeah, that was it, okay. Someone had a feeling. Uh, okay, how about... I'm not see, but I'm not seeing the continuation here. Oh, maybe, oh, queen to d5 here, look at this, queen d5. That has to be it, yeah. This is just great. And now we have to give another, we have to give another, actually no, we can just take the, we can just take the queen now, right? Yeah, we can just take the queen, take the queen and knight off. What a problem. So, I didn't see this queen to d5 idea after knight c5, king, uh, king to d2. I failed to see this idea. Yes, in fact, in fact, that there is a, a hint. All the time when we start active operation and he answered with a forcing move uh, after our forcing move, that the complication works in the favor of the one which started the complication. Yeah. Yes. Let's see so what the computer simply, has to say. We simply renew the, the threat of uh, not B7. Okay, so computer uh, says after uh, queen f1, it says it's an equal position back. after rook to b2. Rook and to b2. Yeah, there's nothing and better. Knight f2, uh, knight f2, and king to c3. There's not enough. There's not enough. Uh... Yeah, it looks like we get back the exchange, but not more than that. The end game should be fairly equal. Okay. So yeah, this is the move that I didn't analyze. So I thought if he was going to take on c5, then I think rook to d8, he's gonna get mated soon. But what? I failed. What? I failed to see this idea. I failed to see queen to d5 after king d2. But I was able to see it immediately once the moves were on the board. So it's interesting. Yes. yes. What, what do we need to do? We need to accelerate because as long as we, we spend too much time, then the then we're we're not going to get the sense of immediate danger. Yeah. Okay. So important lesson there. Always look for uh, the more forcing. Queen f1 was not forcing enough, you could say, and gave white enough time to consolidate. Exactly. exactly. So let's we didn't let's move game. on to the next one. Yeah, that's a sad that's a sad yeah. mistake, but it's okay. It happens. It happens. So for people just joining us in the chat tonight, welcome guys. We are having a very chill stream. By the way, please do confirm that you can hear both of us properly and the music is not too loud or too soft. I always ask my viewers to confirm that things are working as intended because you never know with the technical issues sometimes. So the last move in this puzzle, okay, and this is only move, oh sorry, no, this is move 33. For some reason I thought I was scrolling up. Yeah, it's oh, like some before an G4, it's a, it's a, what's this called, the Makogonov system with early H3. Yeah, but then, 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 then it's C5, so it, it turns, turns to be turns kind of some only, type of Benoni structure. Carbon. But he cap but white captured symmetrically, so it's not really a Benoni, it's more like a... Yeah, yeah but, but, but the, the position uh, open up... Uh... Wow, look at this, so many, so many hanging pawns in the center of the board yeah. here. Oh yeah, this looks very this looks very good for white, so let's just fast forward and look Even for the 
correct. Even the positional players, they, they, they like to attack. Somehow, and they feel the urge to, to throw some pieces and to have some hanging pieces. Yeah, this is... So the position from C6 is hanging. Yeah, that's... There's uh -huh. something. It has a P, and then... What's what, what the defense in case of Bishop B3? Bishop B3, I think... He just, I think no. If Bishop B3, I think he just takes, right? Yes. We take back, and now he plays like Bishop E7. So Bishop E7. The Bishop is stealing here. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but after, after Bishop, Bishop B3, B3 we, we, we take, take in between Bishop D6, threatening Bishop B5. Ooh, I like it. I like that idea. Yes, that's good. I like it. So what if if bishop b4? Then we just take the rook on d8. Okay. Yeah, yeah and the, the difference, difference is that, that the bishop on b3 is stable, it's defended by the pawn, while the bishop on a4 is, is uh, in here. Yeah. yeah, I like this because as Grandmaster John Nunn said, loose pieces drop off. So he has this acronym. I'm not sure if you heard about it in English. L P D O. Loose pieces yeah. drop off. So which which means in a chess position, especially in the middle game try to position all your forces such that, that, that they are defending each other. So they should be defending each other at all times. And, and uh, we, we just have to, to find a simple deck like, like, like a double attack or, or removing the defender is not so complicated. In the chat, Field of Thunder is saying beware of Bishop to H2 check ideas. Yeah, exactly, but the, but the rook on D2 is, is uh, defended. Yeah, I think that's also a good point. The rook on D2 is stable, defended by the bishop on B4. So, let's say bishop to B3, what does he have? He doesn't have anything better. Bishop H2 is the only resource. Like, but then we take and he needs to trade rooks. And then we're in time. To, we're a bishop up in the end. Yes. Yeah. So it looks like this bishop to b3 move is the only good way for white to explore. Even, even in a simple position like that, the, the fact, fact that the king is exposed, exposed that the, the king's safety makes all the difference. Slippery report. Our friend is asking what's up with the music change. Well, I'm just playing some jazz tonight because you know it's a chill Friday. I want to attract as many viewers, as many casual viewers as possible because we have a special guest. So thank you guys for tuning in tonight and supporting me. Okay, so let's just go for bishop b3. I don't think there's any danger for us here. Actually, what about what about rook to rook to e8 setting up a checkmate threat? Let's stop for a second. Uh, well, we just take the bishop. We just take the bishop on d6 with our bishop and there's no more threats. Yeah, I mean, this is a, like, last bullet trick. If you're playing bullet and you're playing with black, that's probably the move you'd go for, right? Just rook to e8, hoping for some back rank checkmate. Yeah, let's go bishop b3 here. Okay, so they take on b3 with their bishop, and here we said we just take on d6 first, setting up this discovered uh, threat. So he's not in time. Yes. Well, in fact, his best idea is probably to sacrifice the rook, the exchange and then play this end game with rook versus bishop and three pawns i think when you when you have three pawns though it's very easily winning for the side with the rook i'm uh, not so easy i, I, I can, can show, show you the technique, technique here if you uh, if we can put it on the board afterwards okay let's uh yeah let's just let's just go for this bishop takes yeah he sacrifices the exchange nothing better than just taking so yeah let's talk a bit about the final position let's say they take on a2 and we take yes, on b6. We take on b6. And then here, well, it's, it's a kind of position where we need the um, schematic thinking. thinking. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's uh, more difficult to put the last position, position here. here. Yeah, yeah, because, because if, if, if it covers uh, f6, then it would be very difficult for for um, for white to, to activate his king. king. Okay. But uh, in this case, uh, in the first phase, we, um, we we try to, to activate our king somewhere around in f4. Yeah, I and think, would you would you play would you play the pawns up first or no? You you just start by activating the king and then push yes. the pawns. Uh, 
Input, input everything you have, and then, then the forms are used just to, to open up some lines or to create the second weakness. Yeah, I agree. The first advantage is that we have an exchange, and probably the second weakness should be created on G6. At some point, he, he will have to defend it with, with, with the bishop, and then you always have this um, uh, possibility to return. Uh, the material to return the exchange for uh, bishop and pawn. So it looks like the best square for the white king to be on is currently e5. Would you would you agree that e5 yes. is where the king should go? Yes. yes. And, and in order to keep the flexibility, you should uh, keep the pawns as they are and, and, and go king h2, king g3, king f4. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's an important lesson in an endgame when you're up and you have this... H4 is also useful just to, to, to prevent some kind of G5. You, you can start with H4 and then King H2. I think personally, if I were to play in this position, I would not move my pawns until my king is at least to F4. Maybe after it reaches F4, then I play H4 to stabilize the king. But for now, I agree with you, we should start by activating the king and then figure out which pawn break to use to create a second weakness. The fact, the fact that the, the f pawn is on f5 is a serious problem for, for black. Oh, absolutely. It allows us to, to start infiltrating from the black. I'm trying to keep the, the, the pawn on f7. You should keep the pawn on All right. I suggest moving on to the next problem and then maybe we can... Let's solve maybe one more or two more problems, then we can analyze some Grandmaster games, and then we can play hand and brain against our viewers. Exactly. So, let's move on here. We, we, need, we need to add up the higher rating. Rate 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 rate. uh, what, the, what did we start at? I forget. I think it was... Like 2320? I, I forget. So, yeah. on my last stream, I lost a lot of points in tactical training. And then today I spent some time before the stream solving some puzzles just to bring it back up. So it took a while, but I managed to. Okay. So the ratio is three to one. You need three correct puzzles. Yeah, because you lose a lot of points. You see here at the bottom of the screen, you lose minus 17. It's very, very hurtful. <laughs> it hurts you a lot. To lose yeah, it's realistic. It's like in real, in real life. You need a lot of good moves in order to win a game. It's enough to do one small mistake and then to screw, to screw everything up in just one move after working so hard for an advantage, right? I, I think uh, uh, they need to differentiate. Yeah, like in the previous puzzle, we 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 didn't spoil completely the position because still equal. So, they need to differentiate, yes? Between, between the, the first move and the last move, there are a lot of decent moves, yes? Oh yeah, I agree. So, here in this puzzle, I have the same feeling of a double attack, as you said earlier. So, my first impulse is queen to b4, attacking the knight on e1 and also setting up some attacks on b2, some threats. Yes, yeah, but the, the bishop is in the bishop is seven is finished. So it is what's the real threat against B2? I guess you're just you're just winning you're just winning a pawn and he has to go to C1 at the end of the line. You're not. And plus you can always play if you if you can exchange queens, you always always have king to g8, attacking the rook and getting out of the spin. Exactly. So, but, but the rook on D3 is, is excellently placed. That is true. That's a great job. The, the rook on D3 does a great job because it, it covers uh, our advance in A4 and That is true, but still, after queen B4, what, this looks like a forcing move, like attacking this loose knight on E1. So what is he going to do after something like queen B4? He has C3 or knight F3. He has C3 or knight F3. Okay. So if C3... If c3, then I, I think we can just play um, queen to e4. So there's a pin. Keeping an eye on, on the same line. And, and it looks like rook f1 is forced there. Right? Rook f1, yes. A so small victory. Rook f1 red. is forced. Yeah, this is this is very bad for white. And we have a double pin and we have bishop to c3 there. Or even knight to f4, I was also considering. 
Exactly. Wow. Yeah, this is this is it looks good. It looks good for us. So so, so this this, this kind, kind of small victories are showing you that you're on the right path and you are approaching the, the final uh, yeah, so what if you set another Maybe. move after queen to b4, you're also looking at knight f3, right? But then I think we can just take on take on b2, they have to take, we take back with the rook, and take but remember, back. remember that you give, you give the attack, you give up. The attack. You're also also important to note in the initial position we are down in exchange, so we're actually down in material. Yeah, so, so we need to, to play our cards in, in the best possible way. Trading trading that means it is not my cup of tea. I see. Okay. We the good I need to uh, suggest uh, some some. Uh, Back rank uh, issues for for white. So I really want to somehow activate this this knight from h5. So let's say queen to b4, knight to f3, and now would something like knight f4 work? Knight f4, then rook takes f4. Let's say. Okay, so rook takes f4, and now we just take back with the. The queen, and it looks like we are Please. finally threatening. Oh, we're, we are yes. in that line, we're threatening rook takes b2. Yes, so it, it doesn't, doesn't work. Rook takes f4 doesn't work. Maybe knight f4, rook c3. No, rook c3 is hanging. Rook e3. Hmm, okay. Rook e3. Yeah, you were right earlier. We we should not. Maybe not e5. Not e5. Queen cannot take on e5. By the, by the way, I'm getting I'm getting some comments uh, from a dear friend of mine saying that there's some echo coming from your side. Do you have headphones or, or something to plug into the computer? Maybe that would minimize the effect of echo. Okay. Go look for some. Yeah, I think I think this is an important point. I mean, people in the in the main chat on Twitch didn't tell me anything until now. So, but somebody else who's watching is telling me privately. Let's just see what people in the chat are saying. Yeah. Okay, so they're saying it happens only sometimes, it's not constant, but hopefully plugging in the the headphones or earphones uh, will help. I think that they, they reduced the, the internet capacity these days. Yeah, it's funny. Maybe, maybe I should also downgrade your, your, your volume a bit here, because usually when I do that, what happens is there's less interference effects. Okay, so pe people in the chat, can, can you hear, can you still hear both of us? Is everything okay? It's food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody because of the coronavirus epidemic, everybody is using you know YouTube and Netflix. And... I don't have Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is. I don't have is... Netflix. I love chess so much. Oh, okay, <laughs> that, that's a good point. I mean, I definitely spend more time playing chess and watching chess games than watching movies on Netflix, but I also enjoy Netflix. Um, okay, so sorry for the short interruption, guys. Let's go back to the puzzle. So we were looking at this queen to b4 move, but... Knight, knight, knight f3. Knight f3. Knight f4. And we said knight f4, yes. Rook e3. Rook to e3, okay, this is what I, knight I actually... Knight e5, five, using the fact that the queen from, from a uh -huh. is overloaded. Uh-huh, I see. Wow, nice move. And we're actually and setting... Nice, the knight which was completely out of game. Oh, okay. 
But also very importantly, we're also not threatening to play knight c3 yet, right? Because our bishop is pinned on g7. So if we play knight c3, we are threatening to play the rook from e3. Right, right. I mean, yeah, that's the immediate threat. Okay. Rook d3 back. Rook d3 back. Then knight c3. Oh, rook takes. Rook takes and now we can we can take with the queen. I see your point. Okay. Yes. We can take with the queen, and now we actually have a mate threat. We can take with the rook on b2 next and threaten mate. Okay. Yes. Uh, he cannot cover the 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 long diagonal. So so, so this feature remains for four or five moves and. and we, we should not call it right away. We, we have we need patience in such positions and just milk it slowly. Okay, so what what about this queen queen b4? What about rook takes e7? So this is a move that we didn't consider, but the rook from e7 would actually defend the knight. Yes, he's right. Rook takes b2. Okay, so queen takes, 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 and now take with. We have to take with the. Yes, yes. but it doesn't look okay. enough. Yeah, this doesn't. With for some reason, I, rook e7 looks very good for for white and does not look good for us. So, what if, if we start with the second idea first? We reverse the move order and we start with the knight and f4 first. So, knight f4, I believe he can just play rook to d4, making use of the fact that our bishop is pinned. Rook to d4? But then maybe we have this interesting move. Queen e2, e e5. e5. I was actually considering e5 as a move. Although it looks against the principle, it looks like you're just blocking off your bishop. Yes. Queen e2 is also a possibility which we missed in the initial position. Oh, queen wow, that's not a move I was even considering. That's a good point. Yeah, for some reason knight f4 seems to me. It's rather than uh, uh, To me knight f4 seems more artificial. Queen e2 makes a lot more sense because now you prevent white from capturing on e7 and you set up this back rank mate threat. Yes, and knight f3 is no longer possible. Knight f3 is no longer possible because of queen f1 and mate next move. Exactly. Okay, maybe two moves because he can interpose two pieces. Mm, okay. So queen e2. Queen e2 has a feel good <laughs> about it. It's like you put the queen on the seventh rank, you attack something. You attack and yeah, I think queen e2. So let's try and find a move for white in this line. What is he going to play? Like, how is he going to defend? Rook g7 doesn't work doesn't because work. of... You just take. Yes, yes with the king, maybe you can take with You can take with either one because they don't have checks anymore. Ah, uh, he has rook h3. Yeah, yes, so we need to take with the... With oh, the, actually we need to... Good point. I, I didn't see that. Yes, yes because otherwise after uh, rook h3, knight h5, he has a queen, queen, queen f7. Queen f7, good point. Hmm, so it looks, yeah, it does look like queen to e2 is a very strong move though. Like, how is he going to defend against all the threats? Like, let's, let's try and find, let's try and find the best move, because obje objectively queen, 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 we have... Queen takes a4. Queen, queen, queen takes a4. Ah, queen takes a4. We just take... Rook b2. Rook b2 and then we take... Oh, very nice, very nice. Rook to b2, more accurate, and then we take with checkmates to follow. I see. Very nice. Or even, even, even we take e1 and then ruby b2. So, so yeah, either, one, is, either one is going to be crushing. Yes. Actually, uh, I think it's more accurate to take the... After queen e2 and queen takes a4, I think it's a bit more accurate to take the knight first and then play yes. rook b2 because you have checkmate next move on a1. Yes, yes otherwise, otherwise we allow... We allow b1. his king to come closer on the dark squares, right? King c1... Uh, yeah, there's some murky stuff. So let's let's go for... I'd say let's go for queen to e2 and see how white is going to respond here. But I think he's going to go for this exchange sacrifice on g7 
and then we have to take back with the king, as we said in our analysis. Yes. yes. But, but, but this, this kind of, of replies, so two, two points, points I, I want to stress here. Uh, first point, sometimes we miss the best move because we, we don't imagine enough candidate moves. And secondly, we have to be prepared for, for his uh, counter-attack, for his tactical low. Because there are a lot of uh, chess trainers which suggest that we don't need more than three candidate moves, but one of those should be a tactical one. And we should focus our attention on, on the tactical reply of our opponent. And, and uh, while um, sometimes uh, this move, like, like, like Rook 7 won't be dangerous, uh, it is uh, very important to feel in control and to, to have this, this move foreseen. Yeah, of course, this is this is a very good point, and actually one of my problems when I play chess in tournaments over the board is I tend to overestimate my position every single time, because I only see my tactics, and I sometimes fail to see my opponent's tactics. So this leads to some misevaluation of the position. Okay, and on the board we can see that white went for this exchange sacrifice, as we predicted, so now we're just gonna take with the king. And now he took on a4 with the queen, but here I think we can just safely take the piece with check and yeah. consolidate. Even play a move like, I don't know, like queen b4, take the piece and then play queen to b4, forcing the queens off somehow. Okay, the problem stops there. No need to convert with the extra piece. So this was, this was a very good problem, I really enjoyed this one. Because our initial impulse to play queen to b4 was actually not the correct first move. And let's show, Wait, let's yeah. show that. Let's show that. Let's enable yeah, the enjoying, yeah, enjoying position while in, in, a, in a playing a game mode, we, we will focus on, on discover as, as quickly as possible the candidate moves and then, then digging deep on one variation or another. Yeah. But, yeah, we, we, uh, because the positions are are, are strange, uh, we we feel like like uh, discovering the hidden the hidden relations between the pieces and. I mean, I think in this position, of course, we start with an exchange down. So after playing queen to b4, they just take on e7, defend the knight, and now we are actually under attack because our central pawns are also crumbling. So, yes, and, and these tactics with, with rook g7 and rook h3, uh, his pieces are, are full of venom. Yeah. Okay, let's let's do one more puzzle, and then we can switch over to analyze some master games, and then we can play hand and brain. So hand and brain. Move. Yeah, hand and brain, brain is so much fun. Hand is sadly, awesome. because sadly because we're not in the same room, <laughs> uh, you will have to be the brain constantly, and I have to be the hand. So it's kind of difficult to switch the roles because because we're not in the same room. <laughs> okay, so in this puzzle here, this started from uh, some strange periods. Oh, I don't even know. This is this is really strange. I have no idea what this is. It's turning into some sort of old Indian. Yeah, it's an old Indian. Yes. Yeah, this is some old Indian. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. This Let's just. Send Bishop G5. Let's fast forward here. So many captures. Yes, yes but. Black. Know. Oh, wow. Black. Wow, what the is... White King. Yes. The White King is all the way out for some fresh air on H3, and he's never gonna go back. <laughs> It does a game back and forth, and, and strategically Black played wonderful, but then uh, probably he was in, in time trouble and, and he let it slip. And uh, now I don't know why why White played King H3 instead oh, of King Well, H3. that's not something to ask me. That's something to ask the player who played this, the <laughs> M M M M Saba, 1980 on Leeches. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it sorry, sorry. Like... The white, the white player was a junior, uh, whose account has been closed in the meantime, actually. So that's usually either because they <laughs> got rid of chess, they, they don't want to play anymore, 
or they got caught for cheating. And Lee Chess usually doesn't tell you if the account was closed because the player chose to, or if they were caught cheating. So they don't tell you that. Like, you know, on chess.com you can see when somebody's account was closed for fair play violation, which usually means computer engine. Yeah, but here it looks like Black is just in total control and needs to somehow deflect needs to deflect the queen away from this h5 square yes. so then there's mate but how to do it rook f8 rook f8 is the first move that comes to my mind but then i think queen g6 queen to g6 they don't have to give up the queen yet yes in fact we have this idea with queen h5 and uh, another focal point could be h2 if we manage to attack h2 focal point very very good this is something invented by um what's his name vladimir vukovic vukovic, vukovic the vukovic. author of the art of attack in chess very good book yeah so i think so you're saying after rook f8 queen to g6 we might even be in time to to take on f3 and then but actually no i don't think that works because we're getting mated no. on the back rank and no we're not we're not getting mated our bishop is controlling f8, so in that line we might be able to play queen, H, queen g1 at the end, threaten... Queen g1, but, but it seems like, like white's king has enough room with king g4 in the end. Yeah, I guess so. The knight, the knight is covering e2 and e4. Hmm. We we'll have to, to use the bishop, because the bishop is hitting g3, is hitting h2 somehow. Um, should play a role. Otherwise, yeah. black's position is simply bad. If he, for example, if, if white manages to, to play something like, uh, I don't know, to trade the queens, even then, white is slightly better, but the king safety is, is uh, white's only issue. So rook f8, queen to g6, and it's kind of difficult to see how to continue the attack. Hmm. So, let's let's go with the progressive thinking. If king g6, ah, but we don't have time for queen g5 and... Rook f8 because the rook is hanging. Yeah, the rook is sadly hanging with check, so that's not something we would consider. What about, what about rook e5, since we don't have uh, problems on the back oh, right? Oh, lovely, about... lovely. I like this one. Yeah, this is great. And rook e5, this is not... g4 is not a move because... Ooh, or actually, is it a move? Mm, uh... Uh, there's some weird... Oh, man. At least, at least, uh, at least, uh, rook e7 or something like that. Well, no, because after g g4, can't we just, can't we just play rook h5 still? We're rook gonna checkmate him. If he takes with the pawn, yeah. we take on h2 and then play queen g5. If he takes with the exactly. queen, we just have checkmate. Oh, this is this is nice. So. And, uh, the, the problem for White is that he's not able to uh, to block the the fifth rank due to the fact that the knight from c3 is hanging. So let's say if okay, so I see your point. So you're saying if rook to sorry if rook to f5 after rook e5, you're saying that we just we just grab the knight. Grab the knight. Okay. Isn't it more accurate to exchange a pair of rooks first and then grab the knight, so that way the bishop still controls f8? Now, since, since uh, he has uh, this queen f5, queen c8 uh, perpetual, I guess. Ah, okay. Oh, very nice. But it's incredibly, like, uh, uh, like how well uh, the back rank is defended, how, how safe uh, black... Black's king is. It, it is quite incredible, and this is one thing that I have noticed, especially in my Blitz games online. My king on the back rank always feels unsafe if there's a white pawn. So, like, if a pawn is on h5, this becomes completely different, and my king is not safe at all, right? But with the absence of a pawn, just with these three pieces on the f file, it does not appear like Black's king is in any big danger for now. And without Light's first bishop, I Even, suppose. Yeah. 
So I guess the nice thing is that the king is defending h7 and g8, and then the rook is defending the entry square on e8. Meanwhile, the bishop and the queen are keeping an eye on f8. So I think I think we should go with this rook to e5. It's very forcing. It forces him to go rook f5. Yes. Because otherwise, we saw why why g4 fails tactically. Yes, and, and g g5 is a is a strong point for for us. We always have that that queen g5 in the end. So I guess here it's important to calculate what happens. So let's say queen takes c3 and then they take on e5. How would you take? I would take with the queen. Queen takes e5. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. To keep an eye to keep an eye on both f8 and e8. To have this. Yes, and, and, and the bishop from d6 uh, covers f8. He needs to do that. Yeah, I think I think it's important to realize why you you said it very well. It's something I didn't see initially. If we take on f5 first, we actually allow him to to have this like perpetual ideas in the future. Usually, you need to exploit immediately the consequence. Yes, you you don't have to wait for another move. You you have to 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 exploit the the hanging knight. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for it because I think we covered this in enough in enough detail that our viewers feel comfortable with our choice as well of yes. just taking the knight. Okay, and the problem ends there. This was a very high-rated problem. We got plus 13 as a result, and we are ending the puzzle session on 23:28, which is pretty good. It's the highest rating we achieved all night long. So I think it's a good time to call it quits for the puzzle section, and let's move on to analyze some master games. What do you say? Maybe, maybe we should uh, take some some guess some guesses from our audience. Oh yeah, actually let's uh, let's if see what they what? are able to guess the moves and let's, maybe let's, let's some of the games. Would people in the chat be interested to to see a master game without the move list? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the move list from the stream and then let's say skip over the opening phase because it's not as relevant and then start in the early middle game and see if our audience would be interested in participating in the chat by suggesting moves so well, let me see if i can create a poll let's just i can actually create a poll so let's do poll and question would you like to suggest moves in the chat for a GM game and the responses are yes and no and we're gonna give them one minute exactly to respond so guys the poll is active you have one minute to vote and if the response is yes we're gonna hide the move list and if the response is no then we're just gonna continue with our analysis so very importantly we spoke about this earlier before going live on stream oh, no. Look at the pawns, they are, they are in the mirror, and, and Black's pawn structure on the king's side is, is much safer, yes? Oh, you mean in the in the last puzzle that we saw? Yes, in the last puzzle. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the, I guess pawn structure was the last thing I was I was focused on in this puzzle. I was trying to checkmate the opponent so hard. Yes. <laughs> but it's always a good, uh, good idea to see why it works. So earlier we spoke, we spoke about the games of uh, Mikhail Tal, the master of attacking, the wizard of unsound sacrifices. And frankly, let's see, how do I how do I load games on Leeches? I forget. Uh, I believe it's. Can I do advanced search and just search by masters? I don't even know. Frankly, I don't know. Yeah, why don't I? I should, I should know how to do this, right? I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a way to do it very easily. I use all the platforms, but I didn't. Uh, le no, actually, I think there's an easier way. I can just import. So we settled on what was that game? Tal Petrosian, 1974. I think. Yes, that's... or the other one? Yes, uh, Let's let's start with the one where Tal was playing with the white pieces. I think I know how to import this game into Leeches. Just bear with me. Paste the PGN. Um, why is this? This is kind of strange. I knew there was a way to import. Okay, yeah, I know how to. I, I just have to, I just have to click on View PGN on Chess Games and now import the game. Oh, but they they know the game. Oh, they know the game. Yeah, right. 
Uh, well, I don't think everybody knows the game. Let's look at what were, what were the poll results. I think I missed that. Um, you have to answer. Two yeses. Do I have two yeses? Okay. Well, in that case, maybe we have maybe we have some people who are not actively participating, just listening to the stream or maybe doing some other tasks. Hide, hide the mouse. Hide the mouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> But you know that takes that takes a bit of time because I have to figure out which which thing I'm hiding. Okay, bam. Yeah, setting up Streamlabs for someone who never streamed before last month was kind of kind of a challenge, I have to say. Okay. So not only are we hiding the moves, but also hiding the computer evaluation at the bottom. And now I'm going to make this board slightly bigger on the stream so people can see exactly what's happening here okay so hopefully this looks passable enough if it doesn't look great on stream my apologies but I was focused on getting the puzzle rush set up correctly first okay so let's skip over the first few opening moves I guess So we're gonna. This game started with a knight of knight of three. Let's disable the computer analysis as well, so you don't see any arrows. Okay. And why why g6? I when I played against the Jan Gustafsson, knight of three, he played g6 against me. Okay. Because he realized that I I. I rarely play uh, E4, you know what I'm saying? Against the... Uh, after 9F3C5 or 9F3B6 uh, or 9F3G6, E4 is, is always uh, a good weapon. You know, that's because uh, Black tries to, to attack uh, the center from the wing and then White should go Right away for the I have some words of wisdom here. If you intend on playing e4 at any point in the game, why not just play it on the first move? <laughs> that's my <laughs> that's my word of wisdom. He, he waited for a, for a, a bad move for g6 and then he went. Oh yeah, no. So for me, I've always been a one e4 player because you know Bobby Fischer said best by test, and for me, e4 is my bread and butter. It's the move I enjoy playing the most. I have tried. I have tried F4, I have tried B3 in Blitz games, but none of them feel as good as E4 to me. And D4, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very tactical player, so out of principle I don't really play C4 or D4 or Knight F3 for some reason. I prefer E4. But I, know, I know you play more moves though, like you have tinkered, you have played a bunch of first moves. Not always. Yeah, I started lately to, to return uh, to E4 and, and I enjoy it very much. I, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that we are on the same on the same page. Okay, so let's just slowly. I mean, fast. Let's go fast through the opening moves. This transposes into a Pierce. This is called the classical system of the Pierce with easy development by White Knight F3, Bishop E2. In fact, in fact I, I think it started like like a modern. Yes, because yes. Uh, so it started like only, a modern. Only now we can call it Pierce when when Black puts the knight on F6. Correct. Yeah, that's absolutely you're absolutely right. So I think this is where Black has a choice to make. Like in this position, after both sides castle, generally. Black chooses from a number of options. There's like bishop to g4 as a move. There's knight to c6. As c6 after c6. bishop g4, Anderson used to kill this this position completely. Because after the bishop g4, can we input? Uh, yeah, I can. I can input some sideline. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because after bishop g4, bishop e3, then. And it's very difficult for for uh, for black to defend against this simple plan. Bishop e3, and then they play queen d2, uh, rook e1, and at all the time when when black pushes um, e5, yes. For example, here. Um, you mean in in, the, in this very in this position? Or in this position, uh, usually. Uh, 
They played some like Knight BD7, right? No, Knight C6. Oh, Knight C6 and now. Uh, C6 and now Knight C6 Queen D5. Okay, Queen D2 seems very normal, very logical. So, Knight C6 first and then Queen D2. And, and now, now, e, now e5, now e5. Exactly. Yeah, and this transposes into some... Yeah, but this end game is, is very good for, for what? But this is a famous game between Karpov and Timon, and I'm not quoting this from memory, I can see it on Lee Chess. Uh, uh, I think, okay. yeah. Ah, there's a game when, when Timon... Both. Won I'm, see I'm actually seeing two games between Karpov and Timon in this line. One of them from 1977. Yeah, but, uh, but Anderson uh, and Petrosian used to, to play this as well. I see. That's why. That's why. So D takes E5. Oh, D takes, okay. D takes E5, D takes E5. And now uh, Rook A D1. And in the end, in the end, uh, Black has to give up the, the pair of bishops and. and Ah, okay, so this is like a very very positional way to approach it. In my database yeah. here, I'm seeing Queen C8 as the main move. Yeah, yes, Queen C8 and then... Um... Either H3 or Queen C1 here. Queen C1! Queen C1! <laughs> this, looks kind of, this looks kind of odd. It's not very It's not very often that you have a fully what? open D-file. Everything is symmetrical. Yeah. But the point is that... Uh, Black won't be able to retreat with his bishop on e6 due to knight uh, g5. Yes, yeah, so this is no difference that, that you are able to cut h6 and then black doesn't have the possibility to play h6 and the bishop from e3, which is superior to bishop g7, makes, makes the difference. Okay, well this is an interesting sideline, but let's go back to the game and see what actually happened in this spell against Petrosian. So Petrosian went for a knight to c6, which is one of the main moves. And should we should we give it to the chat? Let's ask the chat what would what would they play here? I mean there's a number of good options, but what did you think what do you think Mikhail Tal played in this position? If you know the game, I guess uh, I guess let other people guess. If you've seen this game already and you know it by heart. Or maybe suggest why. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Why? I'm not basically I'm not aware. I'm actually not aware how to play this position with white because against the Pierce I play a different system. I play the Fianchetto system with G3, Bishop G2, Knight G E2. H3 and then Bishop E3. I think, I think it is uh, one of the most annoying setups for, for Black because Black is expecting a sharp battle and then the fire is, is met with, uh, with the ice. Yeah, exactly. You're trying to quiet the position down. And lately I've found myself playing these Fianchetto systems very often with the white side. Like I even started playing... I played G3 and Bishop G2 even against some of the Sicilians now. So against the Khan, against the Taimanov, I play G3, Bishop G2. And because because uh, White didn't uh, set up the ideal center with C3, somehow D4 is, is the weak spot in, in White's camp. And the Knight C6 is very logical. He tries at some point to push E5 and install a Knight on E4. I guess Black Black's hope is to is to centralize. I mean, to fix the structure in the center and then start some sort of attack on the king side if the center gets locked. Yes, he wants e5, and then if d5, the knight is and the typical king's Indian um, yeah setup. Uh, queen e8, bishop d7, f5. He's already. Uh, builds up the pressure, and after knight h5, knight f4, uh, when the center is blocked, and even h5, bishop h6, stuff like this. Okay, and I just changed the title of the stream. Uh, I'm calling it Analyzing a Tal Masterpiece with I am Nod, liches.org, and Special Command Guest. So if you guys are just tuning into the chat right now, we've been streaming for about an hour and a half. We started with some puzzles, we are analyzing this Mikhail Tal against the Grand Petrosian game, and then we're gonna move on to do some hand and brain against you, the viewers. Okay, so let's go back to the game, and 
nobody in the chat actually writing anything for the next move by White, so I guess we're gonna have to move on because otherwise we'll be stuck until midnight. So what happened here is White played this d5 move. So fixing, yes, which is, fixing the structure. This is not recommended. He has to break the fans. But in fact, that was going on for, for leading development and he wanted to send that knife back. Probably he knew that Petrosian won't allow those double pawns after knight e5. Very li and it's very likely, yeah, it's, it's very, very likely. So I think Tal here just wants to pretty much define the structure with the pawns on the light squares and then start some type of attack. So this is his yes. style. And Petrosian knew for sure what he was up against. I mean, he knew about Tal's reputation as a very aggressive player. It was well known. Yes, maybe, maybe he wanted to provoke him to, to create some, some positional weaknesses and then to... To explore those dark squares. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very possible. So now, here, of course, there aren't that many good moves for black, I guess. So, yeah, 95, 95 is... is uh, yeah, 95 cannot be... It's not enough because white takes and then B should be 3 and 3 and... A4, A5, uh, those bishops on this and diagonals and white will grab space on, on the queen side. So that's why, that's why he retreated all the way back to B8. So now he's hoping to bring his knight out again through D7 most likely. So, in this position here, I guess, what are the main features? I, I guess the main features are that white fixed the pawn structure in the center, and now he's going for this lead in development, as you said. Yeah, but uh, it's very interesting that here he waited to see how black will undermine the center, with C6 or E6. Okay, so I guess in, in, princi in principle, how should you undermine the center? We are taught that usually you should undermine from the side. So if you can use one of your flat yes. pawns to undermine the central pawns. Yes, and uh, a good uh, thinking tool, like, like uh, I already mentioned earlier, would be to let black move here, to play like c6, c takes d5 in your mind, e takes d5, and then realize what happened with the position. In yeah. fact, uh, white will have the half open on e5 and black will have like in a Sicilian the half open c5 and, and uh, that back, backward pawn on e7 will be a serious uh, problem for black. Yes. And I, I suppose the next move... Yeah, the next, the, the next move is quite, is quite logical, I think. I mean, what what does White have to do here? I mean, he can develop the last minor piece, the bishop. So the bishop would probably go to either e3 or g5. He yeah, can but try. It, it's too early. It is too early because uh, any of those developments have drawbacks. And of course, a move that personally I would probably play in this structure is h3. I would play h3 to restrict the development of the light squared bishop. Yes. So, but in this game, actually, Tal went for something, I guess, more a bit more aggressive, a bit more in the spirit of the position, going for the attack rather than prophylac prophylaxy. Um, so, Petrosian was known for prophylactic thinking and stopping his opponent's plans. Tal was not known for that. Tal was exactly the opposite in terms of chess playing style. So here he went for rook to e1. And this is a move that makes a lot of sense, increases the scope of the rook along the e-file, somehow supports a possible e5 advance if needed, and this, yeah, bishop, this bishop on e2 This bishop on e2 seems a bit awkward at the moment, but at least it's preventing the pin from g4. So, at some point in the future, white will have to move this bishop again. And now it's very funny, I find it really funny, Black, Black's next move seems a bit counterintuitive to me. So, I don't know, how do you feel about this move, e5, that Petrosian played? I think he, 
He was going to go for this plan anyway, to attack on the king's side. Okay, so you think his, uh, if, if white doesn't do anything about this structure, you think Petrosian's next moves would be knight h5 and f5, f4, correct? Exactly. Okay. And, uh, I guess the main I difference think, in this position is, is that the, the white pawn is on c2, not on c4, so white's counterplay on the queen's side is coming a bit slower than in a typical king's indian structure. So this this is a an interesting plan. Let's call it an interesting plan. But Tal was not gonna go for that. Tal doesn't want to get attacked on the king side himself. He wants to be the aggressor. So of course he just gets rid of this central pawn by playing on passant. D takes e6 on passant. He gave some tempi though. He did because he spent three moves. He spent three tempi with this d pawn just to capture on e6, and now. Black's dark squared bishop captures in just one move. Yes, but he had the reserve of knight c6, knight b8 back. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, at least it, it looks like it looks like Black is catching up in development. It looks like Black has two more moves until he can connect his rooks. Same thing goes for White. He needs to move the bishop and make some space for the rooks on the first rank as well. So here in this position. Normally, Black would try to orchestrate some type of central break with d5, but right now it's not it's not possible, right? Or maybe it's premature, maybe not impossible, but premature, I would say. We have a suggestion. Oh, we have a suggestion in the chat. Bishop f4 from Alamando23. This is our mod, so he has the sword, which means he's the moderator of the chat, has very special powers. And yes. he's a, he is not necessarily um, a tournament level chess player, but he can see some stuff. And in fact, he is suggesting the correct move here. Bishop f4 was exactly what Tal played. Nicely, yeah, he has, nicely uh, spotted. Yeah, very good job. It looks for, for a bit, but the idea is queen d2 like we saw earlier. In, 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 in the position with symmetrical pawn structure. White, in fact, uh, threatens queen d2 and rook a d1, mobilizing his forces on central files and then some, some kind of um, e5 breakthroughs. So, in fact, in fact uh, I think just he just guessed. Uh, how Petrosian felt that day. And <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, this is still back in the day when people were allowed to um, basically smoke while playing chess, correct? They were still yes. they were still allowed to. Yeah, those were the the good old days, so to speak. Nowadays, that's unheard of. So we are not going to have the chat suggest moves for black. We're just analyzing this from White's perspective because it's a lot more fun. But here, Petrosian actually played h6 which makes some sense but also yes, appears to to avoid queen d2 because he wanted to to preserve uh, the dark space bishop yes yeah, so h6 exactly so this is prophylaxis at its finest white's next move was going to be queen to d2 and then aim to exchange the dark squared bishop from g7 so good point so h6 actually has a good purpose and now the next move for white? Come on, chat, help help us out. What's the next move for white here? What would you play? <laughs> this is a miniature, by the way. The game is only going to last... Uh, 12 more moves? Thir 13. 13 more moves and the game is going to be over. And these are both world-class players. So these are not... You know, just like club players who blunder once every five moves, like me. <laughs> so... After queen d2, g5. Slippery. Stay consequent with the plan, queen to d2 and still... Okay, yeah, I think queen to d2 just runs into, into g5. And you would be forced to go to g3, otherwise you allow Maybe knight to g4. If yes, knight h5. And... Yeah, there's. It looks like black is sufficiently defended on the king's side to go for this type of aggressive pawn push there. 
Yeah, so Queen, Queen to D2 has been played in a master level game before between two people from the Czech Republic in 1998, but it's not theoretically important, so to speak. I mean, we're already kind of out of theory. This is not necessarily a theor theoretical line. White deviated. White deviated with this d5 move earlier. That was not the main theoretical move. H4. H4, wow. But that gives up a very important square on g4. Yeah, h4 is the type of move that I would be very reluctant to make here, just because I'm giving up such an important square in my camp. The problem with Black's opening is, in fact, that he doesn't have a central pawn. And, and all the time try to exploit the fact that Black misses his e5 pawn and he's far away from, from undermining the center with e65. So, when you can try to occupy the center of the pieces. Okay, this is a very big hint, guys. Nad is giving you a hint. So, we have more space because our pawn is on e4 versus black's pawn on d6. So that means we have more space to maneuver our light pieces. RPD350, thank you so much for following. Knight to d4 sounds like a good idea. Yes, math player, you are correct. Knight to d4 was the next move. So white is basically saying, I want to grab the bishop pair. The center is kind of open, so that would be a pretty good advantage. So, of course, black responds by retreating his bishop to d7. Black, can you return a little bit? Um, yeah, 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 sure, I can return. No few problem. moves, few moves. Okay. If, if if black would have taken with the f takes e6 uh -huh. earlier, f takes, okay. after the en passant capture, yeah. here, if, if black would have taken um, like this, then e5. Oh, I, I so, agree. I, I think e5. So in fact, e5 in fact after knight d4, after knight d4, white is threatening the same the same idea, to take on e6, f takes e6, and then e5. Yeah, I mean, position, positionally this looks very good because you're isolate, You're going to be isolating this pawn. And not only is the pawn going to be isolated, it's on the third rank, or sixth rank, which blocks the bishop. So the isolated pawn is, is not good there. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a good point. So you're saying that via transposition, we would arrive this, at the same structure. Okay, but he retreats. Petrosian retreats the bishop to d7. And now, how is white going to continue? And by the way, meanwhile, while players are trying, while people are trying to figure this out in the chat, can you tell us a bit more about this Fide Trainer title that you you have? So, what are the requirements for somebody to become a Fide certified trainer? I, I think first of all to, to have a, a proven activity in chess, yes, and then uh, some uh, good results at national level. Yes, in order to to be senior FIDE trainer, you need some uh, some medals or to world or European championships, and then have some some uh, published books and, and articles. But for FIDE trainer, you you have you need a proven activity on national level and uh, to have a certain rating. I don't know. I think. Uh, over 2200 okay so there is During some your life. there is and, some and requ there is some requirement for you to even have a minimum rating okay and we actually have a suggestion in the chat. To, to have a peak of, of uh, this rating but i think it's just a certification that that you're at some level and you can coach people uh, uh, 
at your uh, at your level. Yes, uh, you can guide them. Let's let's uh, say for me till uh, 2400. Yeah, you are. I actually just used a special command in the chat to tell all the people in the chat who you are, and you actually reached. Um, I am level, and your peak rating was 24.11, if I'm not mistaken, from the FIDE website. Yes, so, a long time ago. A long time ago. I mean, recently, in the past, let's say, 10 years, you've been more focused on coaching young talents more so than playing. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, and you can, you can see you have excellent results at the youth levels with your students, and I think everybody who ever worked with you has only good things to say about you. So that's very good. And yes, we actually had a nice, I... had a very nice suggestion here by our mod in the chat. He suggested Queen to D2. Uh, yes. Field of Thunder wants wants to watch us play Hand and Brain a bit later, so we're gonna message him privately. I can I can do that most likely. Yeah. So let's let's actually go with this Queen to D2 move, which was suggested in the chat. That is correct. Yes. It's actually the correct move. The difference is that after 94, Black no longer has uh, 94 or 95, 95 uh, chasing our bishop. Aha, uh -huh, okay, yeah, that, that, that is a good point. Because now we can. After g5, after g5, bishop e3, let's say, uh, uh, or bishop g3, 95 is no longer possible. Ah, uh, okay, because we moved we moved our knight from f3 to d4, so and now, now we open this bishop on this light square diagonal. Very nice. I actually failed to see this difference. So that's something I definitely missed in my understanding of the position. And now this is where you believe that black made a slight inaccuracy with king to h7, correct? Yes, in fact, Tao had him. He understood perfectly uh, what Petrosian had in mind and then he simply tricked him with, with every single move. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Tal definitely enjoys this position. He's on the attack. His minor pieces are placed very well in the center of the board. And if you guys were playing white here, and imagine you were Mikhail Tal. I know it's a bit hard to do because we're nowhere near that level, any of us here. But imagine you are trying to attack as quickly as possible. What move would you make here? You mentioned that that knight c6 was the best move for black. Just one second. Okay. But it was it was a risky a, a risky attempt to to. You mean knight c6 instead, instead of king to h7? Is that what? Yes, you mean? knight c6 okay. instead of king to h7. Uh, trying to uh, after knight takes c6, bishop takes c6, bishop h6 to to conquer the, the e4 pawn in return for h6. Uh, it's something like this? Wow, this is complicated. But there's so many captures, the nature of the position has changed a bit. Yes, and, and this is what black has to do. Yeah, yes. I guess with the, absence, the absence of the h pawn is not necessarily dangerous yet. I allowed once uh, such a queen on h3 and I regretted deeply afterwards. Because <laughs> that knight from c3 can, can approach somehow, knight e2, knight f4, h4, h5, and not necessarily in this position, but, but that queen looks very scary on, on h6. Yeah, so Alemando is asking us in the chat as fast as possible. Yes, so I'm ba what I'm saying is basically if you are playing with white here and if you're trying to start an attack or be aggressive against black what's the what's a move that you would make here i mean a normal person would play rook from a to d1 centralizing and maybe just bringing the last piece into the center into the game but Tal here, had something else in mind here here i i would like to to uh, to make a point that that the opening and, and uh, the opening doesn't finish at the same time for both players. White, white is in the middle game, while, while black is in the opening. Yes, and then Tal wants to keep it that way. Yeah, so Tal has a lead in development and that's very dangerous in his hands especially. And by the way, Alemando, when did you turn into a, ch a chess genius? Did you... Did you turn into a chess genius overnight? You're getting all the right moves. Congrats. He actually said, he actually said E5. 
He actually said E5, yes. which is the correct move. You have a lead in development, so let's keep it that way. Play E5 and profit later. Yes, and, and this is why it's so important to study such games and uh, to get the feeling for the opening, because then the walls will suggest themselves. But RPD350 says he has a coaching lesson. Yeah, thank you so much for stopping by and hope to see you later as well. Uh, yeah, this E5 move is something that I really enjoy. So I guess in, in this game in particular, E5 is my favorite move because it's just so so to the point, so direct. Yes, it immediately opened up the diagonal, D1 is 7 against the king. <laughs> it, it mounts the pressure on poor Petrosian. Or Petrosian, and also he can't actually retreat the knight anywhere. I mean, a knight retreat is not a good idea in this position. Yes, and he was completely in reactive mode. And then that was all pure aggression, and then uh, he, uh, Black was, was forced to, to find. Yeah, so Black is. And of course, here, of course, we only have one move, so let's just take back. And here, Black played knight to e4 and this is already kind of forcing as well like there aren't too many things for white to do here so of course he has to capture the knight because the queen is under attack the bishop is also under attack and you don't want to play something really strange like queen f4 because let's say he takes on c3 take back and then it looks like white is slowly losing the steam so white has to capture here so he took on e4 black is forced to capture on e5 and we reach an interesting position black has the bishop pair the center is fully open or exploded I, as i like to call this pawn structure it's called the exploded center there's no more central pawns whatsoever and all the central squares are available for the minor pieces uh, it looks like atomic chess if you ever played atomic chess on VHS, it's very interesting. Whenever you capture something, the squares next to it explode and you lose all the pieces. So, in this position, although Black has the bishop there, he's still behind in development. So, what should White do here? How to highlight this even more? He wants to keep to keep Black behind. Yes. Yes, and then he he focus on, on uh, preventing 96 at any cost. Absolutely. Yes. So you want to keep this lead in development and usually that's that's usually done by making a temp a so-called tempo move. So keeping you simply keeping black look here. you simply look at, at the next uh, developing move for black and try to to forbid them. Good point. Yeah that's a good point. So black can can you what, put the board in the center because oh oh the back I, I right, messed up yeah yeah no, I, I I think I just I just did something really strange I scrolled I scrolled down a bit my bad yeah it should be good now <laughs> you should be able to see it in the correct position yeah the board was a bit cut off my bad it is true that those uh, background pieces are out of play but so in this position after Bishop takes e5 this is where we are at. We want to make a tempo move and not allow black to play his normal development knight to c6. So we're gonna give give the guys a few more seconds in the chat and if nobody says anything then we're gonna keep scrolling because we want to play a bit of hand and brain to end the session as well. Okay, so let's actually show them the tempo move. The tempo move was knight to f3. This attacks the bishop on e5. Of course, black doesn't want to lose the crown jewel of his position. The bishop is the strongest piece he has currently. So he just goes back to g7. Yes, after bishop b2, rook a d1, and again knight c6 is... Yeah, is so this is, this is a normal development, developing move. Rook a to d1 brings the rook to the central file, makes perfect sense knight to c6 again denied as you said because the bishop is hanging on d7 so black has to make this awkward looking move queen to c8 to get off the file and now it's white's turn and the computer evaluation i can see that on the side you guys cannot but i can see it the computer evaluation right now is actually plus two 
So white should be easily winning at the Grandmaster level from here. So find a way to increase the pressure even further. And we, we did say earlier, I basically g gave you a hint for this position, uh, the bishop on e2 is not really doing much, it's even blocking the rook's action along this file. So find a more active square for that bishop. This is so normal, it feels so natural, the way Tal is playing in this game. Like, all the moves make sense, there's nothing... So easy. Yeah. There's, nothing, there's nothing truly brilliant about this game. Like, I don't find this game necessarily brilliant, I just find it really good in terms of execution or attacking. But there's no one move that makes me go, oh my god, how did he find that? It's more like, white has a lead in development and is slowly crushing black. So I pretty much gave the move away. I mean, the most active position for the bishop is obviously on c4. Alemando knows. Alemando knows. It's either he's a chess genius overnight, or he's just like watching the game in a separate browser window. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> he admits, he admits to doing that. Okay. I was scared for a second. I was like, wow, you actually see all this stuff. That's amazing. By the way, Alemando, did you finish the ELO meter test? I finished it. I finished it. How, how did you do, by the way? Uh, pretty good. What did you get? Pretty good, but I knew, I knew a lot of them, and uh, uh, I think one of them were with inverted colors, and like 2,500 and something. Oh, wow, that's the upper, upper league, major league. I got 2,200 something, and that's uh, way above my current... Elo rating. I mean, my current rating is like, it's not even 1800. Yeah, it's like 1795, which I find kind of funny. But I haven't played a lot of classical chess tournaments in the past few years. So yeah, bishop c4 makes sense, allowing allowing the major piece. Oops, I gave it. I scrolled. I scrolled into the game. That's not ideal. Um, allows yeah, the major if, pieces. If king h8, if king h8 here. If King H8 is suggested by, by the computer... Yeah, King H8 is suggested by... Yes, then Knight F6, very, very nice move. But I'm actually kind of mystified. Why is the computer... Why is the computer showing this King to H8 move? Because my computer... Just, just to avoid what happened in the game. But like, the evaluation is currently turned off. This shouldn't happen. It's really... Okay, I disabled it completely now. That's really strange. That was really strange. Because so I can't get the shield. If you can get shield, then knight uh, f6. Very nice move. Ah, yeah, that is very nice. You simply, you simply find a, a good home for that knight, and then yes. it is. It's actually defended by, by queen a6, queen g6 afterwards. So this is because of this. And okay, what's the what's, what's the next move exactly here? Is it rook? Yeah, queen g6 and g5. And... Okay, because I mean. Oh, you take the bishop. Oh, sorry. I I thought the queen was still on d8. My mistake. <laughs> For some reason, in my mind, the queen was still on d8. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so here what... Bishop g7, g5, huh? Yeah, bishop, bishop, uh, e8. Yes, and, and here he needs to play after knight f6, he needs to play um, bishop uh, f5, let's say. In the previous line. Oh, in the previous, oh, I see. Yeah, but here it's already looking so bleak for black. I mean, the knights for white are so strong. The knight on b8 and the rook on a8 and even the queen on c8 are so poorly placed to defend here. They are not even contributing. Meanwhile, all of white's pieces are contributing to the attack. Yes, but if you don't imagine that mating pattern with knight g5, queen h7 would be terribly difficult. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this, this is where pattern recognition makes a lot of difference. I and mean, here, as a grandmaster, you recognize there must be some sort of sacrificial attack because of the local superiority. And this, I know this is something that you always tell your students. Yes, you have exactly. an advantage in numbers. You should always try to break through because your army is bigger. 
so you should have more firepower. And uh, they reached their the peak potential and there's no room for improvement anymore, so you still need a transformation. Yeah, and here, yeah, this is this is just so strong, what, what White did here. And we're gonna give it away because we already showed it on stream, I scrolled forward. The move was knight from E to G5 check. And what's beautiful. the point? This is this is a beautiful move. It's a sacrificial attack that opens up the H file. It's important to note that black can't actually defend just by moving just by moving the king, right? If he moves the king, you can even sacrifice the exchange on E8 and then take on F7. So right. So this, it's important to note that, so that's why Black actually went ahead and took. And there's not much to be said here. <laughs> White, of course, will take this pawn back with the knight, bring the, the other knight into the attack on g5. And now At Black moves. Black moved to g8. And it's time to, it's time to say goodbye, so to speak. I mean, here White's advantage is really large. And he just needs to find the knockout blow. If if king h8 instead of h g5, it's the same queen f4. And... Ah, okay. So if, if if king here, then just queen f4. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. So here he took, he took, he, got, he went to g8, and I guess there's not a whole lot of of value in like finding the best move here, the position is so clearly winning for white that even making some small inaccuracy is still going to lead to a win. But Tal was very focused, very clinical, and he actually found the best move in the position. And of course you have to notice the weakness, always look for weaknesses in your opponent's camp. In this case the weakness is obviously the h7 and the f7 square. So if somehow you could bring if somehow you could bring the queen all the way to the H file and checkmate your opponent, Black King on H7, that would be really nice. So White's In next the move of the sacrificed knight. Yeah. White's next move suggests itself. It's really not rocket science, I guess. Queen to F4. Threatening to bring the queen here and just deliver checkmate. Very importantly, the light squared bishop is also placed excellently along this diagonal. So the pawn is pinned currently. And here, what did Black do? He played Knight to d7. Of course, intending to solidify, to consolidate with Knight to f6, preventing this checkmate idea on h7. And alas, the final blow comes here. And we're not gonna spend more time on this game now because it's so out of hand for Black already. Final blow, sacrificial again because it's tall. Rook takes, eliminating the defender, and there's basically no defense against White's threats here. They played one more move, and now he resigns. So, after Bishop takes f7, Black resigns. Because of course, if you do this, then there's just this, I guess. Right? Is this the, is this the move? Yeah, because you're not even in time to play And f5 is dropping. Now I have bishop f5 here. Wait, wait, where? Yes. So which line? After queen takes f7? Yeah, now here. Here, I get it. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so maybe you have to, uh, to give after bishop f5, queen g6, bishop f5, queen h5, then. Or maybe simply rook e7 directly without queen takes g6. Uh huh. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. That's a good point, because even after a queen exchange, I mean, black is losing a piece, there's gonna be a queen exchange, there are so many pawns on the 7th Yeah, there's two pawns and then the rook on the 7th. Yeah, there is... Collateral victims. Collateral victims. Okay, so let's, let's move and play some hand and brain. So, can you guys... Uh, hey, hey Mike, hey Mike in the chat, Hi. welcome. Uh, can you guys uh, message maybe Feel the Thunder and tell him that we're gonna play Hand and Brain? Maybe he wants to get in on the action. Let me just do it this way, I'm gonna accept 
a challenge here. I'm going to abort and resize the board. Yeah, we have a bit of delay. Let me abort this game and resize, resize the board just so we can, just so we can actually play. I can hear the music. I, I would love to hear the music. Ah, yeah, you can't hear the music. Um, this is 960. Sadly, this yeah, this was a 960 position. But what I'm trying to show is just the uh, our clock. <laughs> so I think being aware of our clock is is good here. <laughs> and we're going to play something with increment, just so we can actually play hand and brain properly. I'm going to look for an unrated game. So if people in the chat want to play us, just challenge. Just challenge Vlad under. What story. happens if you if you move something else? If, if I said pawn and, and you move the knight... Well, then I, need, then I need a punishment from the chat. We'll let people in the chat decide what the punishment should be. But yeah, let's hope that we don't make such mistakes. So let's let's do a casual game. I don't want it to be rated, because technically you're not supposed to play with assistance in a rated game. And I guess hand and brain is a form of assistance. So let's... Let's do it this way. Let's do casual. What's your time control? Favorite time control for hand and brain? Five plus two, five plus three, three plus two. You name it. I name it. Okay. Let's. If people in the chat are not challenging us, then um, then we're just gonna challenge random people. Okay. Let's decrease this. Let's do three plus two. Three plus two casual. Maybe let's uh, let's do a smaller range of ratings. Let's accept let's accept challenges from even lower rated people. Yes, yes, yes. Hand and brain is supposed to be very casual. We're not gonna get mad at each other for missing <laughs> the ideas. Um, oh wow, we are getting oh we're getting a challenge from our friend from our client here. Okay, you are the brain, so you will have to suggest the move. So only the piece. Pawn. Only, only the piece. You said pawn, yeah. Pawn. Okay. I'll mess with you a little bit. <laughs> oh, no, it's bishop. 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 Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're doing this to me. All right, all right. And by the way, we let's hope that our opponent is kind enough to give us a bit more time at some point because of the lag on the stream. Because we're losing some precious seconds even in the opening here with the lag. Oh. Oh gosh, what are you doing to me? I don't play. I don't. You know, I don't play this, right? Okay. I, play here. I have no idea what I'm doing. No idea. <laughs> I have zero idea what I'm doing. Let me message Feel the Thunder just so I'm sure somebody does it. Okay, so Knight F6 was the last move. Oh, oh. Okay. He moved knight to c6 if it helps. Oh my. <laughs> Let's go for this. I, I, I'm, I'm starting. I'm starting to like our structure now. Nice. Okay, let's go with this knight. Castle is king move. Yes, so yeah, if you want me to... Castle, I have main king. Yeah, you just have to say king. If King. King. Yeah, I was I was hoping that you would want to castle in that position. <laughs> it's not it's now or never. I mean 
I think Alexander Gristchuk said something like, if castles is a legal move in the position, it's very possible that it's the best move. <laughs> Bishop. Oh, I'm starting to like this now. This is good. I like the structure. The early F4 is something I really enjoy playing. Yeah, it's like after F4 you are allowed to push an E4. Stop his counterplay, I guess, with A4. Correct. We have time for sacrifices later. <laughs> okay. He goes but A6. Nice. He goes B5. Oh. Took back with a pawn. Oh! <laughs> so many pawns. So many uh, pawns. Usually against those. <laughs> hey, it's okay. It's just hand and brain. Don't worry too much. Even if we somehow blunder our queen, you know, it's called the Botez Gambit because of Alexandra Botez. It's uh, it has an opening name because of Twitch. So Twitch made this gambit very popular. She has so many followers, she's like the most popular chess streamer. They took on F3 with the bishop. Bishop! Okay. They played queen to c7. Pawn! Oh, I love this caveman attack, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> they played h5. But I don't know our move. <laughs> because. Oh, we played. Okay, we played g4, they I played h5. Okay, okay, so we're down to 37 seconds, so we're gonna have to act fast now. Bomb. g5, knight, d7. Mm, queen! Okay, we have 31 seconds. Maybe our Bomb. opponent can be kind enough and give us more time. Like 30 seconds. We, yeah, need five. Like, we can give we can give him we can give him some extra time as well if he needs to. But <laughs> now he's asking how to give us more time. <laughs> okay, so he gave us more time. We're gonna give him more time as well. Okay, good. So now we have one minute and six and thirty seconds. Okay, that's that's enough. That should be enough. All right, that's enough. Because <laughs> now it's transforming into a different game altogether. Okay, B4 was his move here. Rook. Wow, Rook. Where to move the Rook? Somewhere where it cannot be attacked easily. Hmm. Okay, oh. Yeah, let's go rook fc1, but I'm not sure if this is what you had in mind. Ah, we have two minutes now. I... Yeah, yeah, so we asked for I we asked for extra time in the chat. In the I game. Just to shout, boom, 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 boom. He took and on now. c3 with the pawn, so we have to oh. recapture, I guess, yeah. Look at look at our opponent delaying castling for so long and playing this really yeah. bold this bold like h5 move. Yeah, our opponent is a pretty strong player. He scored 2300 on the ELO meter test. And now wow. he, fi he finally castles. Wow. After he deflected our rook. 
Yeah, yeah, look at that. Positional masterpiece by Black so far. Forcing us to put our rook from F to C1 and now castling. Okay, uh... Well... Honestly, I don't know where to move the rook. Hmm, can I move it to A2? It's quite passive though. Yeah, I have to say, I, I believe I prefer black in this position. <laughs> I, would, I would take I would take this position, but <laughs> with black, not with white. <coughs> Excuse me. What else? Rook B2 was threatened. Yeah, I mean, I saw I saw it. That's why I played Rook A2. We have the bishop pair, and I think, frankly, it's time to go Tal mode. That pawn on h5 is looking ripe. But after rook a2, the rook from c1 is no longer defended. That is a bit sad. Okay, so rook b7 was the last move by black. Um. What to do, what to do? Queen! I have no idea if you meant Queen to D1, but that's where I played it. Oh, Jesus. That's definitely I want the queen, that... queen to G2. <laughs> oh, you want the Queen to G2? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Maybe some, some tricks with f5, with e5. Yeah, he, play, he doubled rooks on the b file. Uh, boom! Boom! Whoa! Okay. Ah, making use of some. some tactics here. I played d4. Yes! Yeah, I, I think I'm seeing. No king safety today. Nah, no king, king. king safety is overrated. Especially in casual <laughs> casual blitz games, king safety is way overrated. So by the way, I suggest after this one we play maybe one more game against Field of Thunder and then call it quits because then the stream will will have been up for almost three hours, I guess. Uh, two hours and a half. It's getting a bit late. And my neighbor from downstairs is probably not too pleased with me streaming all day every day. <laughs> I haven't I haven't received a complaint, but I'm just saying that maybe because it's getting a bit late we could end the stream. So he played Queen to B6 here. Queen to B6. Yeah. Then another pawn move. I like it. I played D5 attacking his knight. Because out of 20 22 moves, I think. <laughs> we made a lot of four moves. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, our king would be much safer with the pawns on f2, g3, and h2 instead. <laughs> and now. Let's see, he's thinking. He's in time trouble. He played. He played knight a5. Knight a5? He's aggressive. Oh, shit. Rook! Oh my gosh, you Let's are... see what he has in store. Let's see well, which rook though, wow. I have... Okay, I played rook from C to A1. Great. Played knight b3. Knight b3. I, I missed that pawn from c3, which is hanging. Oh. Okay. Well, now you just gotta play fast. Oh. You don't have to play good moves. Just... Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, this is some crazy stuff. He took on d2. Wow. Oh. Oh. That's a bold move. He took on f3, so that's check. Okay, he took on b6.
Rook. I played Rook C2. He played Rook B1. Check. King. Uh, where to go with the king? Let's go to G2. He played Knight to B6. Oh. I plugged that hole with C4. He cannot play the knight to c4 anymore. He plays knight a4. Boom. F5 was the move that I came up with. He plays yes. rook to b2, the rook from b8. Rook, rook, rook. Oh, Jesus. I took the rook. He takes. He has the initiative. He has the initiative. I need to move fast. King. I need to King. move very fast. Okay. Uh, King g3, rook b3. Ah, I just made a move. I just made a move so with wooden flag. I think I, I think I blundered. I guess the position. Ah, you can't. Okay, I'm, I'm, I don't have enough time. I'm just gonna play this based on. I, I'm still flagging though. Yeah, there's no way to. Yeah, we, we, we are losing. I'm gonna resign. Good. Oh, excuse me. I almost sent a rematch. Did I mean to send a rematch? Let's analyze this very fast here. Towards the end, he definitely had the initiative. And maybe even his queen sacrifice was correct. Who knows? Yes. Yeah, f5 was good. I should have played it f5 sense. too. Yes. Yeah, I, I just so completely wisdom, lost. I just completely lost. The crowd is yeah. overrated. One, one, one consequential player, player and can, can beat two others. Yeah, that was a bit. That was a bit sad. F6 was the move. Yeah. F6 was the move. Let's see if. If Phil the Thunder wants to challenge us, but, but we need five two. Yeah, we need we need something. So go for mate immediately. But he knew your style. This oh, guy. He, he knows my style, and he probably knows yeah, your style. Yeah, he knew your style. He, he didn't let you uh, display the usual stuff. Well, you had me—you had me play bishop in the Sicilian on the second move, so I don't know how to play that. <laughs> it was a gift. Yeah, I mean this. If f6, bishop f8, what? Uh, he's saying in the chat, f6, bishop f8. Yeah. Yes, yeah, instead of king h4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end, I was so panicked. I just wanted to make a move so we wouldn't flag. So. In the end, uh, the king's safety. Oh, he ha he challenged rated. Okay, he challenged rated. Generally, I am against this, but okay, we can play rated. Okay, we're playing white again. So let's let's try and win this one. Pawn. Pawn. E4. Pawn. What's his rating? His rating is twenty two fifty nine. Our rating is twenty four zero two. He plays G six. Pawn. D four. Bishop g7. Knight. Knight c3. Good. I know not to play the other one. d6. Pawn. Oh wow. Uh, I'll go for the fianchetto setup, so I play g3. Knight d7. I was intending the Austrian attack. Ah, I don't play that, sorry. <laughs> Bishop. Bishop g2. e5. Knight. Knight g2. Correct. I played this system. Knight e7. King. Castles. He castled as well. Bishop. Bishop e3. F5. He goes for f5. Oh. Wow. Too many choices. Too many choices, yeah, you're giving me so many choices. I played f4. I had d takes e5 in mind, 
in the first place. Really? You're gonna give up that square? Huh. Yeah, just has to open up the D file. Okay, that's yeah, that's actually not one of, I was considering the other capture. Uh, e takes F5, but not D takes C5. Yeah, but now it's completely <laughs> a totally different story. Yeah, now it's a different position completely, I agree. Let's hope for the best. I mean F4 looks logical enough, it doesn't look too bad. But yeah. It has a small drawback though. But his knight is on e7, not on f6, so I'm generally more inclined to play for this f4 setup with the knights. This is the hippo. This is like the semi-hippo. He doesn't even have b6 and bishop b7 in yet. I saw Gatakamski, he likes to play the hippo a lot. Yes, a lot. But he knows to do what to do after. And then <laughs> he took, he's such a he took on d4. Player. He took on d4. Then uh, bishop. Uh huh. Take with the bishop back, okay. He plays knight f6 now. Um. Pawn. I play e5. Great. He took. Bishop. I took on e5 with the bishop. I think white is better here. Our bishops are more yes. active. He plays, he plays c6. 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 What? Now it's difficult. Now it's difficult. We are he about... wants queen b6. He yeah. wants queen b6. I can see that. So maybe queen, queen. You have to move the queen. I'm gonna keep the queens on the board, and I'm gonna play queen c1 here. Actually, it may not be very good, but I'm keeping the queens on the board. I was thinking of, of queen d4. And that's also a move. He played knight g4. I was looking at queen to d4 as well, but... So he plays knight to g4. Oh, very nasty. Very nasty. He plays well. Bishop. What to do? I took on g7. He took back with the king. Pawn. 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 Whoa. Which pawn? That's the question. Okay, h3. Yes, we have to get rid of that knight. I agree. He plays knight back to f6. <laughs> what to do? We're almost queen. Done. Queen. I played queen. I don't like queen. queen. He queen. played knight from e to d5. And another queen move. Mm, queen f3. Queen b6 check. This is what I was afraid of. This is why I played queen 3 in the first place. <laughs> so, king. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, this is not looking great. King, king. h2. Yeah, you meant queen f2, not queen f3, right? When you said queen. Of course. Yeah, of course. I didn't see that. It's tough, because we don't have attacking positions and then, then uh, if, if we have to switch plans with, with every move, then, then it's difficult. 
It's we always keep... night to E3 and we have to speed up a bit because we're down on the clock. Rook? Rook to... Ooh. Wow. He wants knight g4, maybe. I played rook from f to c1, but we might be in a terrible position here. Yes. Yeah, I think this is looking quite bad. The whole idea to, to keep the queens on the board was not good. Yeah, it was probably not very good. Yes, uh, queen d6 or queen d4 there was, was good enough. I just wanted to play my queen to c1 like Tal did in the previous game. And by the way, guys, in the chat, this is our last game for tonight. It's getting a bit late, and we've been streaming for a while. Okay, he plays knight from e to g4. Check. He goes for perpetual pawn. Let's take that. Okay, he took back with the knight. King, I suppose? Let's see where to play the king, not to get some... I played on h1. He goes knight f2 check. King. Okay, I'm gonna offer a draw, I guess. He goes for this. Does he want a draw? Yeah, he takes a draw. Okay. And my rating is exactly 2400 now. I dropped two points, he gained five points. And he has, yes, a, because... quest he has a question for you in the game chat. Let's see what his question is. Why, why not uh, King g1? Maybe we can try to play for more. Uh, so he's asking, how come you didn't go for the Austrian attack? And I said, well, you wanted to go for the Austrian attack, but I am the hand, you are the brain. So, because I'm the hand, I played, I played G3 instead of F4. Maybe so, he has something special prepared there. So maybe, maybe he has, uh, maybe he knows you so well that. Uh, that he actually knows you prefer this Austrian attack setup. Well, we had we had quite some fun tonight, guys. It's been it's been yes. really fun. We did very we, we well have in the puzzles. We to speed up a little bit with the tactics and, and um, yeah. give uh, more space for the fun. Yeah, I mean uh, this was this this was this was a good stream, I think, and it's going up on YouTube. So I'm going to download and post the archive on my YouTube channel as well because Twitch. Twitch deletes all the videos after 14 days, which I find a bit stupid, but it makes sense. With so many users streaming and hosting all their videos on their server, it becomes very large in terms of file sizes, disk size. Okay, well, Nad, thank you so much for joining me tonight and doing this Thank thing. you for having me. And... I greatly enjoyed um, even despite the small technical difficulties that we had with the small echo, I think the stream was overall pleasant for our fans to watch. And maybe we can do this another time as well. But yes, until, of then, until then, we'll have to we'll have to say goodnight to everybody. And of course, we have some viewers in the in the United States, in North America. So for them, it's not night yet. So for them, we we want them to keep enjoying their their day and have a nice weekend and we promise to do this again if you want you can be a guest streamer every you know every week or every two weeks how often you want i enjoy collaborating with you and i hope you feel the same me too thank you very much all right well bye bye guys and thanks for joining